Welcome back to class time. We now move to CSET geography. I am Clarine McFarlane, and today's lesson will focus on agriculture. Let's get into it. Today we'll be discussing agriculture as a primary economic activity. Now our objectives for today would include defining the concept agriculture, explaining the factors that are influencing the development of agriculture in the Caribbean region, identifying areas in the Caribbean where commercial and subsistence farming is important, and we will also compare the characteristics of large-scale farming and small-scale farming in Jamaica. So we will start by looking at agriculture, what it is. Oftentimes, the term agriculture is interchangeably used with farming. More or less, they are the same in this context. By definition, the cultivation of crops and the rearing of animals define the term. The term can also be defined as the cultivation of crops and rearing of animals for human consumption or for use as raw materials in industries or factories, as you may be familiar with the term. There are different types of agriculture to include arable farming, which speaks to the cultivation of crops only. There is pastoral farming, which looks at the rearing of animals. We also have subsistence farming or peasant farming, which is practiced by farmer and he engages his family into the whole regime. So the rearing of animals and growing of crops to feed the farmer and his family in a local community is referred to as subsistence farming. We also have commercial farming, which involves the growing and raising of livestock as a business or for export for sale. Now this business of agriculture is it is really looked at or it is measured using different dimensions. Some of these would include, and they are also used as characteristics to distinguish between peasant farming or subsistence farming and commercial farming, are the location, the farm size, the labor that is involved for production of crops and the rearing of animals, the tools and equipment that are used on the farm for production, the technology that is used, as well as the market or the purpose for engagement. Agriculture is indeed important for many reasons. And some of these reasons would include the need for employment. We spoke about subsistence farming and the farmer is engaged in farming activities, engaging his family. So more or less, some of those family members may not need to look for a job because they have it right there for them. There are different jobs that are afforded to them as well in the scheme of farming, not just to go out and put on water boots, but also technical jobs are involved. Agricultural products are a means for export on the local market. And as such, the locally produced food, they reduce the need for import. So we don't need to go out on the um, international market to gather food. So we have what is needed right where we are. So it is much more cheaper for us as a nation. It says foreign exchange in the sense that we are spending less. It is a part of our heritage as far back as history would tell us. Our first ancestors who settled on the land, they engaged in farming of some sort. Some of us are from um, family backgrounds where farming is still the primary economic activity that will send us to school, to put food on our plate, to get us clothes that we need, and all the little fancy things. Local production also improves food security, which means that farming will supply all that is necessary for the growing demand of the immediate population. And as such, it is also used as resources or raw materials for industries to, or for industries to process and to make other things. We can think of the true juice factory that rely on farming activities to get oranges and other fruits to make the juices that we consume. We can think of Grace Kennedy 
who will process different farming produce in order to make food or tin food, which they will process in a different economic activity, which was previously discussed. Agriculture also provides or contributes to export earnings by means of the gross development product, the money that we earn based on what is produced locally, as well as generating income for local families, especially those in rural areas, which I touched on a bit just now. We look at why agriculture is important. Let us look at some of the statistics. And these statistics are local. They are specific to Jamaica. So in Jamaica, we have about 202,000 and more hectares that are active farmlands. That was in 2007. When we look at the absolute change between 1996 and 2007, we're looking at a decline. In terms of the types of farming activities, the cultivation of crops, what do we say that was again? Arable farming, good job. What that does, or because there are different activities that are now involved where money is produced, people are engaged in those activities as well. So the need for farming or farming is not seen as a first love or an economic activity that others would want to engage in to begin with. And we have the breakdown in terms of the different activities, such as inactive farmland, woodlands and other farming engagements, lands that are identified as farmlands but are not reportedly being used. Even there, there is a decline based on recent developments. The employment statistics as it relates to Jamaica and farming we can see obviously a decline from 2007 to now 2020. So we have just a little over 15.5% persons who are actively engaged in farming activities. There was a bit of change between 2011 and 2050. So we see a little decline from 2011. Then it picked up a little bit between 2012, 2013 into 2020. 2014 but then the decline started up to 2020 we look at the sectoral gdp the contribution that there are comparatively with other economic sectors such as mining and quarrying electricity and water hotels and restaurants where can we find agriculture agriculture is probably the fourth in terms of contributing the least to the gdp of jamaica some of the jobs or non-traditional jobs that are involved in farming activity would include biochemistry. Um, let me find some odd ones that we may not hear of every day. We think of greenhouse managers, aquarists, agricultural specialists, greenhouse farmers, and that is away from the typical farming activity, going out to plow the land, the weed, the grass, and stuff like that. These are new jobs that are emerging. And with the emergence of technology, we also find that new jobs are being named, linked to agriculture. We even have agriculture research taking place. Despite the changes in numbers and the contribution of agricultural land um, activities in the Caribbean region, its contribution to the economics of the Caribbean, we find that it is still important. It is a source and a reliable source of food. It is also a reliable source of family income, whether we like it or not, whether or not we want to engage in it. And it is also seen as a viable means for foreign exchange. Once we have commercial farming in effect, some amount of foreign exchange is generated. Now, looking at the agricultural land use map of the Caribbean, we'll see that we, well, there are proportional, proportional circles. What these circles represent is the size of the farmlands on each Caribbean country, with Cuba being the largest. And I want you to follow me as we investigate this map. So notice the pie chart, as I mentioned, was drawn in proportion to the size of the country. And at the same time, Cuba has the largest, which means that they have a high dependency on agricultural activity. With that being said, employment linked to agriculture is really high. So much of the persons who are employed are employed 
to the agricultural sector. Cuba, Dominican Republic, and Haiti follows thereafter. 90% um, of their farmlands, uh, well, together, Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, they account for 90% of the farmlands in the Caribbean region. Let us now look at Jamaica. Only 44% of the agricultural farmlands in the Caribbean region is accounted for by Jamaica and Barbados together. And with the improvement of technology, the increase in demand for buildings, you find that there is consistent decline where that is concerned. There are different factors that are influenced the development and lack thereof of agriculture in the Caribbean region, and these may be classified under three headings. We have the physical factors, the economic factors, and we also have human factors. The physical factors would include climate, relief, and soil. We'll look at all these in a little while. The economic factors would include the market and the capital. I know these are some familiar terms to you. The human factors would include land tenure and size of the farmlands, traditional practices that are involved in the production, the role of the government, inheritance practices, as well as labor. We'll start by looking at the physical factors which are influencing the development of agriculture. We'll start by looking at climate. When we talk about climate, we're mainly looking at two things, the temperature and the amount of rainfall that land, um, agricultural lands are afforded. Plants and animals alike, they need different amounts of water in order to survive. And like ourselves, plants, need the water it is necessary for them without any water then we have no form of production we're not even thinking about the low yields that we will get where there is not enough rainfall irrigation systems are applied irrigation systems are artificial means of bringing water to your farm so we can bring irrigation systems in the form of tubes we see sometimes farmers with a knapsack looking container on their box and they have a spray can on it that they can disperse the water to their plants we also speak of tubes spray pan and we also have the aerial systems that runs in pipe above the different plots the seeds germinate at a particular temperature and this is dependent on the type of crop that is being planted some are also located in areas that they will have the suitable temperature necessary for them to grow. Farming activities, as was mentioned, are mainly dependent on the diurnal rainfall rate, meaning the difference between the highest and the lowest um, temperature that is recorded in a particular day, or the annual average temperature and rainfall that is recorded over a year. There are other climatic factors that may affect how farming develops in different areas. These are sheltered slope, which will protect the plants from terrible winds or high winds, as well as direct sunlight. Now, on sheltered slope, some plants will grow best as against those that will need the direct sunlight and are not affected much by the wind strength of the slope. Soil is another factor. Where agriculture is concerned, the soil must be properly aerated. It must be fertile, having the right amount of nutrients, and so the mineral content and texture are also important. Absent these qualities, the soil is said to be infertile, and as such, the yields will be very poor and your crop will be very little. If the soil has the necessary nutrients that are needed for plant growth especially, you'll find that the farmlands are afforded artificial fertilizers 
and in some cases manure, especially where subsistent farming takes place, where the manure from the animals on that particular plot is used, it's not wasted, it is used to add the mineral content that the soil needs. And of course, there are other practices that are engaged, such as crop rotation, that will improve the quality of the soil. Then we speak to relief. Relief as a physical factor, it speaks to the height and the shape of the land. So we have farm plots on hilly areas or in, on the hilltops, such as the cockpit country or the blue mountains. We also have farmlands on plains. Now, the relief is very important, seeing that it determines the extent of the machines that are being used on the plots, how they are used, if they should be used, what plants are planted or what crops are planted, what animals are engaged in the farming activity as well. The higher in elevation, the cooler it is, as I mentioned before. And some crops, they prefer the cooler temperatures as opposed to warmer temperatures on the flat land. In Jamaica, for example, or based on our history, we'll find that commercial farming is predominantly done on plains or on flatlands. Subsistent farming or peasant farming is done on hillside. Examples of crops that are grown on plains would include sugarcane and on hilly terrains, we will have our yams and other grown provisions, especially those that are in country areas. You probably can give us a lesson in terms of one and two types of yam as they are. Bananas are also grown on flat terrain, especially in areas such as Portland, St. Mary, and St. James. We are now looking at the economic factors that will influence development. Before I make mention of these factors, let us quickly review the physical factors that were listed. We spoke about the soil being an important element for crop production. We spoke about the climate, which speaks to the temperature and rainfall in a particular area, the availability of water, where there is lack, irrigation systems are put in place. We also spoke of the relief, which is the height and the shape of the land. Some crops grow best and on flat terrains, while others, they grow best in hilly terrains. The economic factors would include that of capital and market. And we look at market in two ways. The market can be the demand for the item or the farm produce, or the market can be the physical space where the farmer meets those to whom will consume or purchase the farm products. Distance from the farm must be considered as a farmer if you plan to set up a farm. Depending on the crop that you will produce, you want to know how far can I carry these tomatoes before they ripe or they get soft? How far do I need to carry my cabbage or how far do I need to carry my lettuce without them being withered? And so that is very, very, very important to determine how is it that you're going to get access from your farmland to your market as well. So the perishable items, you wouldn't want to go very far off from your market. You need to be close enough to your market so that at the point of delivery, your goods, your produce are very much fresh as opposed to yam you know that you can have them probably a day before you take them to the market without the yam being steel as jamaicans will say capital speaks to money and everybody love that sound the whole money where farming is concerned money is important because access to funds determines the availability or the lack thereof of certain things that are needed for farming to be effective. So we need money to buy the seeds. We need money to buy fertilizer. 
we need money to pay the rent for the land that we're going to use, depending on the land ownership that we're going to look at in a little while. We need money to rent machines, depending on the size of your farm. We need money to buy machete, hoe. So all the little things that are needed for your farm to produce the best quality goods must be considered. And some of the capital is afforded by the government by different schemes. We'll also check into that. Small scale farmers, they usually suffer greatly due to the lack of capital. Sometimes they don't have enough money and the little that they have is invested into the entire activity. So it's either they are buying with the money that they are earning in the local market or they are buying supplies to replenish their farmlands. And it can be quite costly depending on the materials or resources that are needed for maximum protection and maximum yields on the different farms. The human factors would include land tenure, and where land tenure is concerned, it determines the size. Who owns the land? Is it a case that the farmer owns the land for himself, or is it that he's squatting? Because if he's squatting, he has a limited amount of space to work with. And that limited space cannot turn over much for him because he has to consider movement, one, and him can spread out on the people, them land as if it is his. And that is a limitation for him as a farmer because he will not get access to the loans that he will need in order to develop the farming yields of his plot. So rights of the land is very important whether the farmer will lease, whether he owns, whether he's squatting, whether he's buying that portion of land is very important. If the land is owned by the farmer, then of course him can spread out and do whatever he wants. Him can decide, say, I'm going to let it here, so him can do the pig farm over there, so him can do the cattle over there, so whatever it is that he wants to do, he has the freedom to choose the activities that he will engage in. As opposed to squatters now, you live on somebody's piece of land, there's no way you can determine how you're going to spread out on it. You have a little space for yourself, you have to be comfortable. And as such, in order to generate the most of this farm, what squatters tend to do, they do in small portions, short-term crops or cash crops that will grow very fast to give them the turnover that they need or to provide for their immediate needs. I already mentioned already, well, I mentioned before that these squatters, it is very difficult for them to access the loans that they are going to need to maximize the needs of the farm or to maximize their yields on the farm simply because they don't have any rights to the land. Land fragmentation. So some of you, your parents and grandparents are from families that were dependent on farming activities. So when your great-grandfather died, or when your grandfather died, he would have owned a portion of land, and at his passing, he subdivided his land into different portions for his children. So your uncle got a portion, your aunt got a portion, possibly a cousin would got a portion. So the land is fragmented or subdivided based on the allotment. With that being said, the land size now becomes smaller and the plots are scattered all over the place. So the person who owns the land may not be sharing or having the best relationship. So of course, bad blood will have you own this land without any relation to the other. We know the whole dynamics of that. Peasant farmings, peasant farmers, sorry, on these plots of land tend to practice mixed farming. And I'll give you a chance to guess what mixed farming is all about. We looked at arable farming and we look at pastoral farming. What do you think mixed farming is all about? Think about it and respond. And of course, yes, mixed farming engage far, well, mixed farming will include the rearing of animals and the cultivation of crops 
on the same plot of land at the same time. And this would allow the farmer to have a variety of crops at the same time in the form of crop rotation to eliminate pests and disease and also to maximize the potential of the plot that he has. It is a constant supply for nutrients that the soil will need. So earlier on, I did mention that the manure from the, plant, from the plot of land that is assigned to the farmer is used on the same plot of land as fertilizer. Or probably a little mulching might take place as a means of retaining the resources. Mulching, by the way, when the dried leaves are used to cover a plot of land to keep in the nutrients that are there. And of course, it helps in terms of pest control and it's also is cost effective because it limits the expenditure of the farmer trying to get additional fertilizers from the farm store in order to tend to his farm. In that case where land fragmentation is involved due to inheritance practices, then traditional means of farming are used. So I did mention crop rotation, mulching. We will hear some farmers from time to time talk about planting a particular crop when it is full moon or when it is moonshine um, as opposed to planting up another crop when it is half moon or a particular time of the year so that the yields are maximized. They are more knowledgeable so probably they can give us a lesson in terms of why you plant certain crops at a certain time in certain places. Another human factor that must be considered is that of labor. Labor, whether it is manual or with the assistance of machines. Labor is necessary especially for planting, land preparation, harvesting, and of course to care and tend for the animals. Growing up or the community that I grew up in it is a farming community. So a lot of the persons or a lot of the farmers and families, early morning before my friends would go to school, they would need to tie out the goat or tie out the pig or whatever it is before they go to school. So the, fam the farm animals themselves need to be tendered too. On modern farms or large-scale farms, machines are heavily Use. As opposed to small scale farm or peasant farms, you find that primitive tools such as the machetes or the hoe and the forks are still being used. They don't have the big trolley behind them to pull the yields at harvesting time, but they are used to dumping the farm crops into crocus bag and baskets in order to store them to move them to the nearby market. Donkeys are also being used to carry the farm produce from the farm to the market and sometimes from the farm to the point of storage in some cases. In modern day, we find that taxis are now being hired or probably a relative of the farmer will have a one car that they can use if it is reliable enough to bring them to the market. We look at the role of the government, which is very critical for development in the Caribbean region. And there are different supporting agencies that will carry out the mission of the government or the objective of the government in order to maximize the profits from farming activities. Some of these include Rural Agricultural Development Agency, commonly known as RADA. There is CAFAN which serves Caribbean farmers. It is a Caribbean farmers network. There's also CARDI for research purposes, Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute. And of course, back home in Jamaica, we have the JAS, which is the Jamaica Agricultural Society. Together, these agencies, as well as the government, they provide the loans that are needed by the farmers the subsidies that are needed, and other financial assistance where they may see necessary. The government, at some point, they may take away farmlands for commercial development 
or tourism related activities, seeing that tourism is a booming economy. We did mention that last week. The government may also want to distribute or redistribute new lands which will be available for people to engage in farming activities. Such assistance by the government, what it does, it helps to secure the plot of land that are afforded to the farmers and it also protects them from natural hazards and disasters such as hurricanes, flooding, windstorm, or probably just a freak accident as opposed to crop diseases and plant disease that may happen at any point of the year. We'll quickly look at the characteristics of commercial and peasant farming based on the characteristics that were highlighted earlier. We look at the farm size. Farm size meaning that on commercial farms or holdings are usually over 200 hectares while on peasant farms it is less than 2 hectares. Whereas the machines or tools that are used on farms, on peasant farms it is primitives or simple tools such as your hoe, your machete as those mis um, listed up earlier. On commercial farms, we have heavy machines such as tractors that are hauling systems for harvesting, cultivation, as well as land preparation. In terms of labor, I did mention two types of labor. Labor can be manual or depending on machines. You may also have hired labor. This is specific to commercial farming activity. When we look at peasant farming, the labor is it involves the farmer and his family and sometimes a cousin or a friend may want to join in as well. The crops on commercial farms, they are grown specifically for the export market, whereas for peasant farms, it is grown for the consumption of the family, sometimes for the local market, if there is enough for sale. On commercial farming, monoculture is practiced, meaning there's only one type of crop that is cultivated. Peasant farming, mixed farming is um, done. Crops are processed in factories on estates and the waste materials are eliminated. Whereas multi-cropping, meaning different types of crops are grown at the same time. The use of modern technology on commercial farming as opposed to peasant farming. The plots are too small and the lands are very infertile, so it will not accommodate the technological use. Most fertile lands, they have, or commercial farms, they have fertile lands where the depth is adequate for cultivation as opposed to peasant farming where there is low fertility on the hillside. We'll now pause for a break where we'll look at farming in Jamaica in the video that comes up right now. To provide jobs for persons, you know, yeah, it, it lets me feel like, you know, I'm really contribu contributing to the economy of the country. Um, it just, it, it's just a good feeling and to produce the um, quality products, you know, to compete with the, 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 the international um, market and to produce goods that actually look much better than imported goods is a good feeling for me. Agroinvestment Corporation continue to scout for lands in Jamaica that are best suited for agricultural production through the National Land Agency and the Commission of Lands and also with private enterprises. So wherever there is unused government lands or private lands, Agro Investment Corporation will profile these lands. So by now, we should all be aware of the benefits of leasing lands from the government. But once you've leased the land, how do you maximize returns? Well, knowing the soil type is important. For instance, did you know that over in the Ebony Park Spring Plain Agro Park, the soil type impacts the kinds of crops that can be planted there? Ebony Park, Agro Park um, is about 1,100 acres and likewise the Spring Plain and that's roughly all the lands within there. There are areas of um, non-arable areas but there are arable areas 
arable areas amount on the Ebony Park site to about 800 acres. There's a lot of different soil types, predominantly bunny gate, clay loam. Uh, basically anything can grow here. Uh, once it requires a pH of about 6.5 to about 7, um, there are pockets where the pH might fall to about 5.5, 5.8. So if there's a crop that needs to be having a lower pH, it could, soil could be amended to facilitate that. Um, but basically anything will grow. So let's revisit our checklist. We've applied and submitted all the necessary documentations, including proof of our capacity to invest in the land. We've learned about soil types and pH balances in the soil. What's next after you've been approved? They would assign you a plot number or they'd give you a designated area to where you'd be assigned. Um, I guess you'd view it to see maybe what you'd need to do. Uh, if it needs a bit of clearing, you might want to look at that, how you go about doing that. Um, you'd be advised as the best way to get that done. You might want to go to the NIC um, because our water is pressurized and so the NIC supplies it. So a part of your contract would give you the ability to go to NIC with tenure of land and then they would then come and put your meter on so that you get ready supply for water. We also offer tractor services to plow, harrow, um, farrow and other activities that you might want, rotovate and so on for your lands. So we'll be able to do that. Uh, once you do that, we could tell you of maybe different cycles, crop cycles where you might want to plant best time for certain crop. You might be able to go out of these seasons, but at least we'll be able to tell you that this crop does well in a particular season. The risk might be higher in another season, but so might be the returns. So you could get advisors to that. So local advisors will be there ready for you. Meet Henry Givens, a youth farmer who is a beneficiary of this initiative. He started out acquiring just five acres of land, and today he is up to 15. Givens plants various crops at different stages, including Scotch bonnet pepper, sweet pepper, sweet potato, and Maruga red watermelons, as well as slicing and plummy tomatoes. Leasing land from the government, it, it, it is actually, it, it is beneficial, and um, at the point where I would actually want to lease more if available, you know, I am not employed otherwise. Um, so it is my, it allows me to take care of my two babies um, and it allows me to eat and, you know, survive. So it is something very beneficial, I would say. Life here at Ebony Park, it, it's, it's twofold. You know, it's good sometimes and sometimes it's challenging. One, you know, persons around, some, some persons they know what to do with their crops, for example, and they don't want to do it. Um, so, so sometimes, you know, we have a lot of pest and disease outbreak and some persons just don't want to invest the funds or do what is right to actually, you know, make the agro park much better and a much cleaner environment. And then, you know, also, um, the, the whole, sometimes there's a major issue with the whole irrigation system. Um, it costs a lot sometimes because even if you look into the pepper field, you know, sun scalding is a result of a lack of water supply sometimes. But you know, it's a blessing, you know, and you know, there is not only negative because, you know, once you have irrigation, then, you know, without the irrigation, we, we, I couldn't do anything like this, no, not at all. Farming can be an expensive venture, but it's also beneficial. As a youth farmer, the challenges may not even be financial. Some older persons, because they're so, well, relatively young, they don't want to work with you because they said they don't want to work with a younger person. However, for do, you know, sometimes it's good to know that you know, so for some persons that really can't afford to go into the farming as deep, that you can provide them with not only a job, but you can also assist them with um, technical, you know, technical advice to improve their smaller production um, that, they, that they do as well. My advice to younger farmers or investors is that they should not be discouraged or swayed from agriculture. It is something that can be beneficial and, you know, this a good, is a good way to make a good um, foundation for themselves and their families. So it's something that they should look into and be strong about it. That's the only way we can build our country. That's all the time we have for today. 